gives me great pleasure to introduce our next orator. It's my younger brother, Ritesh Ji. Lawyer from North London. And when I think about Ritesh Ji, I think he's an absolute powerhouse. He is so selfless. He's a true Swam Sevak. And a very apt topic. And so his target audience is students. So with a speech titled, Hind Who? We're going to welcome Ritesh Takrar. Ritesh Takrar, Hind Who? Namaste. The question, who am I, has never been more pertinent in our society today. This question is asked in every single facet of our life, whether it be gender, sexuality, or tradition. Society is more confused about their identity than they ever have been. I am privileged to be part of the National Hindu Students Forum, where I am able to go around and meet hundreds of students throughout the UK. I'm going to talk to you about the experiences that I had on a journey that I took recently when I went to meet some of these students. So come join me on this journey where we begin firstly at the University of Birmingham with our friend Abhinav. Our friend Abhinav is a computer scientist and the head of his Hindu society. Abhinav grew up in the town of Leicester, also known as Mini India to many of you. Abhinav grew up in a traditional Hindu home where as soon as you walk in, you see Baam Bapa crouched over the TV watching Star Plus, see Mother in the kitchen rolling the rotlis so they can be fresh for dinner, and you see Father busy at work at the corner shop that they own. From a young age, Abhinav listened to stories from his Baam Bapa on, on Ram and Krishna. Abhinav would then go on every single week to recite those stories at his local mandir so that the local youths would also have a chance to benefit from this knowledge. Every morning, his Baba would remind him that it was important to remember Bhagwan through his morning puja. Fast forward to when Abhinav is heading off to university, as he's about to leave the door, the last thing his Baba says to him is, Dikra, tara mon, tara savano pujana, pujani bhulje. Son, do not forget your morning puja. Abhinav races off to university and for the first few days he makes sure to wake up early, shower and conduct his morning puja. This happens until the third night where his, some of his friends ask him, Abhinav, we're heading out tonight, why didn't you come? Abhinav hurries along, promising in his mind that he will be back in time to, so that he can wake up early to conduct his morning puja. The next morning, or should I say, the next afternoon, it's one o'clock, and Abhinav has a lecture at 1.30. All he has time for is to shower and brush his teeth, and decides he won't do his morning puja today. But says to himself, don't worry, I'll do double puja tomorrow to make up for it. Second day comes along, and once again Abhinav has had a heavy night out. This time he wakes up, not at 1 o'clock, but at 1.15. This time, not even enough time to shower. Very quickly brush his teeth and straight out the door. Two, da two days turn to three, three into four. And before we know it, we're three months down the line and Abhinav has not conducted his morning puja. On the trip home, as he enters through the door and says, Jesse Krishna to his bar, the first thing that she asks him is, Dikra, tara puja no nati bhuin hone, son. You haven't forgotten about your puja, right? And suddenly he stops and he begins to ponder. Who am I? Our second journey takes us to London where we meet my friend called Jay. Jay is studying at King's College London and grew up in the hustle and bustle of the city. Jay's parents work in the financial hub of London known as Canary Wharf. And every and once a year, something strange happens to Jay. His mother digs out that shirwani that's at the back of his closet, pops it on him and drags him to a marble-laden building. At this marble-laden building, he stands in front of these three statues that he had never seen before. And he's told by his mother, son, you should pray to these statues, for they may befit you some good fortune in the future. 
Jay, looking around the room nervously, sees what everyone else is doing, puts his hands together, closes his eyes, because that's what he's seen the guy next to him do, and stands still. As people pass him, they, they start to say, Happy Diwali. And Jay, not knowing what to say, just smiles and nods. Jay, when he gets off to university, so Jay, when, before he heads home, t- pays a visit into his favorite person in the world, his daddy ma. And when he goes to see his daddy ma, as most of us might know our daddy ma's, there's always something that's hurting. So, his, so as soon as he walks into the door, his daddy ma says to him, Dikra, marapak du keche, marapak du keche. So before he takes off his coat, the first thing he does is go to a massage of feet. And that becomes a regular occurrence for him every time he visits his daddy Now fast forward to when, Abi, when Jay is at university, he's sitting around a room and he's asked by his friends, what background is he from? And each person goes around, the first person stands up and says, I am from York and I am a Christian. Second person stands up and says, I am from London and I am a Muslim. Third person stands up and says, I am from Birmingham and I am a Jewish. I am a Jew. Finally, when it comes round to Abhinav's turn to speak, he suddenly stops and he begins to ponder, Who am I? Our third story takes us over to Steve. Steve is at, studying at the University of Bristol and he's studying philosophy. He's from the historic town of York where he grew up and life is all simply about beers, pub and football. Steve, while studying at Bristol, comes across one of his modules named Eastern Philosophy. And for the first time he begins to learn about Eastern philosophers such as Jiddu Krishnamurti and Gautam Buddha. He's so fascinated by these philosophers he then goes on to do some further research on his own. When he finds out about these philosophers, he looks into some of their practices. And what he discovers is that they were big proponents of yoga and dhyan, yoga and meditation. So he jumps on Google and he types in where can he find a local center that he can go and learn a little bit more about it. And to his surprise, he finds his local Hindu society is putting on a taster session entitled De-Stress the Mind, Yoga Sen and Dhyan Session. And it's happening today. So Steve puts on his clothes, heads down to university, and enters the room in which the, uh, enters the room in which the event is happening. As he enters the room, he's very quickly ushered in and sat down and made to take part in the practice. When he comes out of that room, Steve feels the most relaxed than he's ever felt in his life before. And when he gets home that night, when he's busy typing up an essay, and when it's time to go to sleep, because of the stress, the stress of his essay still playing on his mind, he decides to try out one of the yogic techniques that he learned early in the day. As he begins to enter into yoga nidra, his mind begins to ponder, and he asks himself, who am I? All three of our friends are going through their formative years at university. They're all beginning to explore and understand what their identity is. In the case of Abhinav, who has struggled to now keep, now keep his daily practice of his morning puja, he's still a bhakti yogi because daily he remembers Bhagawan. And Abhinav is a Hindu. We look to Jay, who, although he does not relate to the traditional concept of God, he's still an out-and-out karmayogi because he serves his elders in the time that they need him. Finally, we come to Steve. Steve, who's just beginning to learn about this world of Hindu dharma and beginning to practice some of these concepts, is on the path to Raja Yoga and is on the way to becoming a Raja Yogi. And Steve is a Hindu. My question to you is, these individuals live in this world all the time. I'm sure many of you will come across a Steve, a Jay, an Abhinav in your life. What will you do 
to help guide these people in their journey of Hindu dharma? How will you help shape their identity? Namaste.